Yo, what is going on my friends? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm showing you 25 tips to improve your video editing workflow within Adobe Premiere. I'm also planning on doing one in After Effects in the future, but guaranteed to teach you guys something that you didn't already know before or help you in some sort of way. This is probably my last video before we hit 100,000 subscribers, which is just huge to think of. I'm going out for the next three days and shooting my 100,000 subs special. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. But anyways, like I said, consider subscribing, like the video if you did enjoy. Anything mentioned in this video will be linked down below in the description. Also check out my website website link down below there if you want to download any cool presets and add-ons for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. Anyways guys, let's get right into tip number one which is using the dynamic link system between Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. So I'm guessing a lot of you guys know some of these tips just because I use them a lot throughout my tutorials, but I guarantee there's going to be some stuff thrown in there that you don't know about. This is something that you should definitely know about. So if you have Adobe Premiere and After Effects installed, you can actually right click on a clip in Premiere and then click replace with After Effects composition. Like I said, After Effects has to be installed go ahead and click that all right so the cool thing about this is let's go ahead and throw a little feature on here that only after effects has and premiere doesn't so for example the liquify effect and this is just a little example of course there's so many other features like faster masking and after effects rotoscoping a um, whole bunch of different effects that only after effects has and premiere doesn't there's a whole list of different things you can only do within after effects and that's what makes this dynamic linking so important whatever it is that you want to do you can do that within after effects click file save just like this and then you can hop back into premiere and you're going to see that the clip automatically adjusts and we now have that after effects liquify that we just did within our premiere timeline so super super important and i use this with every single project no matter what it is now tip number two and this kind of ties into tip number one if you actually go down to your project bin wherever it may be and you expand it so that you can see these little options at the bottom this little folded page is called the new item button go ahead and click it now some of my favorite things to do with this is obviously make an adjustment layer and and you guys probably know what an adjustment layer is already it's just a little layer where you can place all of your effects and it's not going to affect the main layer so you can switch it on and off but some other features you may not have known about let's go ahead and click this new page again you can create a color mat so say for example if you're creating some sort of animation and you just want a normal background or just some sort of title screen or whatever it is you can create a normal base color just like this and then you can just drag that in just like that super useful another really useful thing that i use a lot is this transparent video button and i really love how they included this because i use this a lot when i'm using after effects and the dynamic link so say for example you want to create after effects text but you don't want to put it over your original footage if you drag in a transparent video you can use that same method where you right click it replace it with an after effects composition it's going to open up within after effects just like this and then you're going to be able to design it with an After Effects. Put all the craziness, 3D, whatever it is. I also use this a lot with Element 3D or any kind of 3D that I'm doing. So say, for example, I want to create a 3D city. I'm going to use Video Copilot Element 3D Metropolitan Pack. And I want that in its own layer within Premiere. The transparent video button is useful for that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with all this 3D stuff, check out some of the other tutorials on my channel if you are interested. We have a bunch of them. So let me just give you guys a quick little example. So here it is, we have our little 3D city. I'm gonna go ahead and click File, Save. Hop back into Premiere. We now have that 3D city or After Effects text, whatever it is in its own layer. So another useful little tool. All right, so the next few tips, this is just gonna go over some useful shortcuts that I like to use. Now, I'm the type of person where I don't like using shortcuts a lot when I'm first learning out. Some people, they may that may be the first thing they do learn. There are a few things in Premiere that I think are central for just helping you edit faster and better in my opinion. So the first one, which I love to use is just the duplication button. Just hold down Alt on your keyboard, click and drag up. And I use that in so many different projects. It's crazy. Duplicating and just knowing how layers work is a huge part of editing. So keep that in mind. Now, another little tip using that alt key is just using the alt select. Now, say, for example, you have a clip and it has audio attached to it. If you click on it, it's going to select the video and the audio. If you hold down alt and then you click something, it's going to select whatever you click on it. So say you want to select the video and not the audio. Now you can do that. You're going to see that because this audio and video is still linked, it's showing you that the time code is messed up. This is just a useful little shortcut if you do need to isolate audio or video. Now, another useful little tip is using control L. And what that does is it links and unlinks video from audio. So say you want to select this and then move it away. Now that this is unlinked, you can move your video somewhere and move the audio somewhere else. If you ever want to link the video and audio together, or link a different audio to your video like for example so i'm going to go ahead and record myself testing testing one two three and i just emailed myself that little clip from my phone so let's just drag that in there i'm going to go ahead and grab the clip from my microphone which also is my webcam recording and i'm just going to use those little tips i just showed you to sync everything up i'm going to drop it in 
And this brings me on to my next tip, which is syncing audio within Premiere. And it's super easy. Just select the two clips that you want to synchronize together, right click on them and just go to synchronize and then go ahead and click OK. 90% of the time it's going to work. For some reason, the audio sync isn't working with these clips, but I'm actually glad because now I can show you how to do it manually. And that is just by lining these two little waveforms up. And if you don't see these waveforms, just take these little bars, drag them up so they're bigger. You can easily just make a little cut just like that or just line them up manually. Testing, testing, one, two, three. As you guys hear right there, perfectly synced. And now let's go ahead and use those little selecting keyboard shortcuts. Go ahead and use the iPhone video with this microphone's audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold Alt and just click and delete this video, just like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the iPhone's audio. Hold down Alt, click and delete it so what we have left is the iphone video with the microphone audio now let's use that tip i mentioned earlier select it all control l to link it together so now you're seeing my iphone video with my actual recording microphones audio and it's all linked together so you can move it and it's going to stick just like that all right moving on to the next tip and that is just selecting this preview sequence and clicking the squiggly key on your keyboard and this is super important just to be able to fully see what you're doing in your editing sequence not only that but whenever you are masking let's go ahead and just throw a little crop onto here if you go up to effect controls this brings me on to my next tip. You select this little mask pen tool. Whenever you're masking, you want to click that squiggly key and do it and do it full screen. That's definitely going to help you do it faster, less headaches, more accurate mask. It's going to help in a lot of different ways. Okay, guys, on to the next tip, and that is using the screenshot button. Now, I talked about this making those little paper break animation tutorial that I did, but always am using the screenshot button for a bunch of different things, mainly for thumbnails of my videos. So when I am finished with a music video, I'll scroll through the finished project in my Premiere timeline. I'll find my favorite frame from the entire video the one that pops out the most and i go ahead and click this button right here which is the export frame button you have a bunch of different formats to choose from which is a great option you have jpeg png you even have a gif option go ahead and click browse and you can choose where to save that and then if you need some other touching you can just drop that into photoshop all right so next tip and this is a super important tip that i don't think is utilized enough and that is using the source window just to kind of pre-select whatever you want to pull out from a specific clip that you shot so say for example you shot like two minutes five minutes ten minutes worth of video instead of taking that clip and sifting through the part of the video that you want to get and then cutting it using control K and then deleting the rest that's what I used to do before I knew how to do this and this is going to save you a huge amount of time so instead of doing that just in your little project bin or you can even do it in the timeline double click on it and like I said, you can also double click in your project bin to do this. It's going to pop up in this source window. And I never knew what this. I never knew what this was for. I never used this. Find the specific part you want. Click I on your keyboard as in and then go ahead and find where you want to cut. O on your keyboard is out. Another great feature of this is you can either go ahead and click on the window and then just drag it into your timeline. That's going to bring in the video and the audio, as you guys just saw. Or you can use these two little buttons to just drag in only the video just like that or only the audio just like that so it's useful and it saves you time make sure you're doing that another little quick shortcut that i love to use my number one shortcut that i use the cut button and that is control k and i already mentioned using the c button if you want to use the little razor tool if you're adding those little snare cuts or something you can even map it to a mouse button if you want to or use the c key just like this Okay guys, the next tip is going to be nesting your clips and there's two main reasons why I nest my clips. First is to combine two clips together. Now this is similar to pre-composing within After Effects. All you need to do is select the two clips you want to change into one nested clip, right click them and then go ahead and click nest, easy as that. And you can name the nested sequence, click OK. And here you go, now you have one long clip. Now if you wanna change the clips which are within this nested sequence individually, all you have to do is double click on the nested sequence. It's gonna open up in its own little tab and here you can make any adjustments. Now sometimes to pull off a specific effect, what you need to do is apply one effect, nest that clip and then apply another effect on top of that. Let me show you an example. So sometimes with some transition presets or here's the Magnolia stretch from my preset pack. Five frames, control K to cut. Move over five frames to the right, control K to cut. I'm gonna place this little motion tile effect onto here, which is just going to split them up. Then I'm going to select all of them, right click, nest them, and then apply my 
magnolia stretch onto them bam as you guys see a different effect from what you did originally and that brings me to my next tip for improving your workflow which is investing in plugins and presets like all the other tips in this video one it's going to help you edit faster and two you're going to be able to do things before that you weren't able to do there's a bunch of awesome packs out there the red giant pack sapphire pack i have a bunch of presets on my website like i said there's a bunch of free and paid presets all over youtube all over the internet that you guys can look into i made countless videos on different plugins from ae scripts from all over the internet just check out my channel like i said just search on youtube adobe premiere presets slash plugins and you're going to find some useful options instead of having to build everything from scratch having a little preset that you can just go in drag and drop is going to save you a huge amount of time all right now we're going to get into some tips that aren't as fun to talk about but they're going to save you a lot of time and help you in a huge way okay so let's go over some rendering and exporting tips so i'm going to go ahead and just select this little part of the clip I'm gonna go to file new sequence and just put it in its own sequence so it's by itself so when you're ready to export your clip let's go up to file export now most of the time i'll just use adobe premiere's exporter but if it is some sort of big project where it's crashing a lot there's a lot of things going on that may not be going right one thing that can help is by clicking q and what that is going to do is going to add it to the adobe media encoder sometimes it's faster and easier to export that way not only that but in the adobe media exporter it shows you the exact moment where there is a crash it also says so in adobe premiere if there's a crash pay attention to that little error window it'll give you a timestamp. if you read that timestamp, you can go to the exact location in the timeline wherever the crash was and that's a huge tip because some people get stuck they try for hours and hours they ask me why they can't export something look at that time code go find the exact place in the timeline where you're having the error maybe try something like taking an effect out changing something around and that'll usually fix the issue now some other things that can help when it comes to rendering in general let's go up to edit and let's go down to preferences and then we're going to go over to media cache so make sure the location of your media cache files is in a hard drive that has a lot of space i definitely would recommend investing in an external hard drive this little h drive is my external hard drive but i also have an ssd and then another external ssd that i sometimes use let's go over to the memory tab now and this is also super important what you can do is you can take this little slider and make sure that ram reserved for other applications is low so that you have the most available ram for your adobe premiere and after effects programs as you can see i have 13 gigs of ram i'm definitely upgrading this computer soon so i can get more ram in general because i think i have an issue with that now if for some reason you're getting a bunch of different errors you don't know what's going wrong sometimes doing this can help let's go to a file explorer i'm going to go to this pc and as you can see this is why i use a bunch of different hard drives double click on there i'm going to go to users select my name i'm going to go to app data i'm going to go to roaming i'm going to go to adobe and then i'm going to go to common and here as you can see you have your media cache files and your media cache now, sometimes if there's a bunch of errors the one thing that I like to do that usually fixes it is I'll go into my media cache files I'll close Adobe Premiere I'll select all of these cache files and then I'll just delete them and go to my and then I'll go to my trash bin and delete them completely sometimes if you don't do that for a long time there's gonna be a huge amount because this can completely just tear through your hard drive space some more performance tips um, this is a this is one that works with a lot of different programs right click down here and just open up your task manager and what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to go to details you're going to want to find adobe premiere or after effects whatever it is you're working in right click on it and then go set priority to high usually i usually put it on high depends on what kind of pc you use but putting that priority a little bit higher should give it a little bit more of a performance boost of course lowering your preview quality in adobe premiere is going to help i usually i always have mine on one fourth quality i never play it back at full complete quality especially with 4k clips as you can see it's already lagging keep it on one fourth play it out in one fourth and the good thing about it is if you pause, it'll be paused in full quality. So you can see what it truly looks like whenever it is paused. All right, next tip, this is going to help you if you absolutely cannot render something for the life of you. You've tried all these different tips before. Computer just isn't strong enough to get through that complete render. What you can do is, what I like to do is I'll take my project, I'll cut out half of it. So we'll just take this half, I'll click Control C. I'll either put it in a new Adobe Premiere project all by itself, or I'll just put it in a sequence all by itself just like that i'll render out just this half if you can get that just that half out great go back into your main sequence grab this half let's put that in its own sequence okay Control v you render out the second half then you make a new sequence again 
and you take those two rendered out halves, the first sequence and the second sequence, you put them all here and you just render it together. So a lot of rendering, but usually rendering nesting is the thing that solves a lot of problems. Another side tip, which is super simple, but needs to be said, make sure you're saving a huge amount. In the Adobe After Effects version, I'm gonna go more into using your After Effects save things and setting up auto saves. The keyboard shortcut for save is control S. I kind of just made it a routine where after I do something, I'll just quickly click Control S. The great thing about Premiere is it saves super fast. It's a lot faster than saving in After Effects. That little shortcut can go a long way in saving you whenever something does crash. All right, so tip number 18, we're gonna quickly cover unlinked media and how to fix that. So just a general little basis of this, we have this clip C004. Now let me go open the location of this clip. Here's a little sub clip. Here's a little sub tip. You can just right click on the clip and just go to reveal in either project or explorer. That's super useful. So I'm gonna reveal it in my explorer. So here it is. If I take this clip and I just drag it out of the folder that it is right now, let's say, let's drag it to the desktop. Okay, so I took that clip, which was in one folder and I moved it into another and we got this error, which you guys may be super acquainted with because sometimes it's one of the most annoying things to happen. It also happens a lot with dynamic link clips, which was the number one tip in this video, but let's go ahead and click cancel. So when this does happen, this is gonna pop up. If this isn't popping up, just right click on the red clip and go to link, just go to link media and it'll pop up again. So pay attention to what it's saying on the screen. This is the the name of the clip and this is the file path that it originally was at there's two ways to fix this you can either find the clip and put it back into the original file path which is right here so my hard drive h in this 2018 12 folder 2018 12 folder or if you do know where the location of it is you can just click this little locate button and you can go ahead and search for whatever folder it's in so i put mine on my ssd go ahead and click search and i'm just going to search for the actual file name there it is c004 click ok and bam, there you go, completely linked and back to normal. That's how you fix that issue and that's super important to know. Okay, next I'm just gonna go over some quick organization skills. I made a full video talking about how to edit faster and just some organization skills, but I'm gonna include it in this as well. So what I like to do is I'm gonna right click a clip, I like going to label and I like using these labels a lot. So for my B-roll, I like to use Mango. So usually what I'll do is whenever I'm first starting a project, I'll take all my B-roll, I'll sort through it in my little source window, I'll get the part out of it that I want, that I like for the B-roll, and then I'll just drag it into Premiere. Then I'll right click and I'll go up to label and I'll make sure my B-roll is marked with Mango. You can use labeling for a bunch of different things. If there's a specific clip you wanna remember in the timeline, right click, use that little label button and just change it to whatever it is. And that's a great way to stay organized and edit faster. Another quick little tip is just naming your clips. It takes a lot of time to just go through and name, but it will help you in the long run. If you want some more organization tips, more step-by-step -step video on how to edit faster, I'm gonna link that down below. And then moving on to my very last tip in this Adobe Premiere 25 tip video is using render presets. So let's go to export media. And what you can do is you can save these little presets. As you see, I have this U YouTube Super HD, which is at a super high bit rate. I'm using CBR um, target bit rate 40. And I don't think there's a lot more going on. Just keeping the same source for the actual resolution. Frame rate, same as how I shot it. You guys can copy those settings if you do want to. Then you can come up to this little button and save the preset and name it whatever. Then when you want to export, you click here. That's only the preset I use when I'm exporting a small little clip that I want to be super HD and look really sharp. But if you're trying to export a long YouTube video with that preset, good luck because it's going to be super hard because that bitrate target is so high. What I recommend you do is you just use the presets that are built into Premiere. It already has a YouTube 1080p HD preset, which I use for all of my tutorials on YouTube. So I hope this video helped you in some way. Huge amount of information. I think I'm tired from talking so much about all these little details, but this video needs to be made because I've had so many headaches. I've had so many long nights of just, of just slaving over the same video where if I had known some of this information that it took me, it took me a long time to acclimate. It could have saved an entire project. It could have saved a scene. It could have saved me time. It could have saved a bunch of different things. So hopefully this helps. I recommend you write some of these tips down in a place you see it a lot or add it into some sort of playlist on YouTube. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, if you did enjoy thank you so much for watching and supporting this is the last video before we hit 100k subs it's amazing how big this community has been able to grow in just a short amount of time so anyways thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys later